In a recent video, I talked about the difference between services companies and product companies. So I mentioned that most services companies serve a customer at a time, where with a product, I've got to serve a market. I don't know exactly who's going to use the product before I build it. So I have to generalize and that's really tough. Pricing is also different. Most of the reason that I go to the trouble of building a product is that I want to scale my business. So I need to value price it. I don't just take how much it costs me and uplift that 10%. I figure out how valuable it is to the market and I charge as much as the market will let me. And finally, of course, the team is different. If I'm doing project-oriented work for individual customers, I have account managers, I have architects and engineers, I don't have product managers. But today I wanna to talk about what really ends up derailing most efforts to go from services to product. And I do this not because this is the most common issue that product managers face. You might come across this in your career. It's because thinking about this underscores some real product fundamentals. So what causes most organizations to fail when they try to go to product? This has been my experience. So look at this graphic. This is a normal life cycle model. You may have seen others that have slightly different stages. Most of them are the same. And superimposed on there, I have a couple of lines. So you can see that I'm only going to start getting revenue when I launch. The more interesting line is this red line that shows profit loss. And the idea is that while I'm conceiving of the product, while I'm building it, there is no revenue. And for a non-trivial product, that can mean a year, 18 months, of investing in engineering and all this stuff without seeing a single euro or dollar or whatever currency you measure success in. And eventually that just breaks the back of leadership. If you're not a product person, if you're not accustomed to this type of investment, it is really tough to keep your nerve. In project-oriented work, very often we negotiate a payment up front, a payment in the middle, and then a payment in the end. From a cash flow perspective, that's much better because I'm paying people, I have a lot of variable costs. With product, I invest for a long time with only the chance of bringing in revenue. And you know, the curve on the graph showed some profitability. That's not always the case. It may take you years for that product to be profitable. For some people in the consumer space, that may sound strange. To those of us in enterprise B2B, we know that's normal. We may not recoup our costs. We may not really be net positive for years. So this mindset around projects and around product are very different. They're almost incompatible. It takes a really strong will to change for these things to be compatible. That has a lot of implications for organizations that are trying to make this transition. And I will address those in another video. But the upshot here is product businesses are very different. And typically there's a long cycle of investment uh, that I just have to suck up until I get it to market. And hopefully I've done my homework Fortune smiles on me and I generate revenue and profit. I hope this was helpful.